bathroom well. This initial mark that I put down, and then I cut into it because it was it was just too big and it, was, it would catch your eye too much. Unless I do something else of a similar strength somewhere else, it's not going to work. So, but I, but I like that. I, I like that mark. I, I like putting down a mark at the start and then saying I will identify that at the end, but I'm going to refine it and make sure it doesn't take over. Um, so I'm already thinking to myself, look, this is this needs balanced. And for me, it's all about balance anyway. To have good balance, you need imbalance. What are you talking about, Naismith? Um, <laughs> to have good balance, you need imbalance. Um, what I mean is, um, if you try and weigh a, a pound of sugar, and you and you go, that, oh, let's try and balance that, and you balance it on the other side with a pound of sugar, there you go, it's balanced. That's like, that's, that's a pound of sugar, we all knew that. We all knew that a pound of sugar balances a pound of sugar. Don't bore me. But if you take a pound of sugar and then you take a pound of feathers, and you've got this big bag of feathers on one side, you can, you can balance sugar and feathers, then there's balance. But it's interesting. One side wins. One side wins in volumetric space, and the other side wins in delicacy. But they both weigh the same. So um, this side's big and heavy, but does it balance this side? Well, this side needs to be big and heavy and light to balance that side, but there needs to be a little bit of the light coming through the dark and a little bit of dark coming into the light, and then there'll be balance. So that's what's going through my head. Let's just get back into the medium here because it might have just uh, been down a wee bit. Um, Yes. 20 minutes left. That's okay. I won't finish it. I'll try. No, it won't be finished. It won't be finished at all. Interesting way of making a sandy colour. Nobody will have made sandy colour like this, I guarantee you. Uh, because I'm going to mix green and red to make yellow. And you go, what? Green and red don't make yellow? Uh, but they do. They just make a desaturated yellow. Because on the colour wheel, when you mix two colours, you can draw a straight line between ones that go beyond a primary. So if you mix this colour and this colour, you can draw a straight line, and in a desaturation colour wheel, you'll get a desaturated version of yellow. And I don't approve it. So, a uh, green... And red. I think I'll use uh, it's kind of an orangey red. Well, it's more of an orange, but I'll still be surprising anyway. <laughs> and you get a brown, but light brown is just a, a light yellow, really. And you say, well, why are you mixing red and uh, uh, orange and green to make yellow? Why not just use your yellow? Because you're, it's just more interesting. I'm going to use a crown that's just to bulk it up. Get it off of there. Thank you. So here we go. It's, it looks kind of, what does that look like? It looks like sap green. Um, and it's yellow. Oh, and it's yellow. Yellow, green. Yes, it's just like that. It's creme. It's white. Green. Any white. Um, bright green lake. Any green really. Uh, I, I've done this with uh, with acrylic, and it was what was the green may green from acrylic and may green and cadmium red. I used one time to do. I, I used with acrylic something. Um, any red as long as as long as it's not too much of the magenta side of red. As soon as you mix green and magenta, they're complementary colours, not green and red. Green and red are complementary colours. There's news for everybody that hasn't watched my truth about colour views. <laughs> green and red are complementary. That's why that's why people say red and green shouldn't be seen. Does anyone really, you know, people know that? 
Um, but you question, you said, why should red and green not be seen as complementary? They should be good together, or you use them as complements. But red and green, the reddest red you can think of is cadmium red, and the greenest green you can think of, well, I don't know, what's the greenest green that you can think of? I don't know, if th phthalo's a bit bluey, a bit cyan -y. Sand green means a bit briny. Uh, viridian, viridian green. So, viridian green, you would think you would get a nice grey or a black with viridian green and cadmium red because they're complementary. As we're all taught in school and in art school alike, if you haven't been taught the truth about the colour green. Um, my truth about the colour green has been viewed more than 100,000 times around the world and I get comments about it all the time about people that go, oh my god, I didn't know this, has changed my life. And it, it would change your life. Um, but it, it means you can always make, you always know how to desaturate something. If I've got this colour here, I know that I can desaturate it with a blue, but you've just got to watch what blue you use, because the chances are when you're thinking of blue, you're thinking, oh, I'll just use some cerulean blue. Well, cerulean blue isn't blue. Cerulean blue is cyan. Okay. So this would be my shadow colour of sand. Of sandy shallow colour created with green in it, believe it or not. And I think I will have a bay coming in here. I'm going to keep a bit of that. There's a bit of that in that relationships with colours. Sometimes you want deliberately to have a colour muddy because of this ambient light, but also because there's a bit of sand under that bit of water there, which will show through, so some of that colour is good in there, but it's important that it is the same colour. Grenets. Nice it's just chunky paint. I think I like it because Kremnitz white behaves in the kind of same way as a colour might behave once it's sat in a bit of cardboard for a while uh, without actually needing to sit in a bit of cardboard. It seems to be quite, uh, quite thick and heavy. Now, we're playing this game of balance here and I might be... I might be right or wrong with that at this stage, but I'm not too bothered. Now I want a little bit of strength to the lights, so I'll go for the titanium instead. I used titanium white, I like blocks, titanium white, blocks, titanium white I've used for 15 years and I haven't found a better one. Even Michael Hardy's it doesn't touch it. It's the stringiness, and it's all personal preference. I mean, you might use it and just go, eh, I don't like that, all that stringiness. Is that, that a make of paint? Yeah, yeah, it's a French make, it's uh, the kind of block X. I think the French would pronounce it without the X. So that's wildly um, light. Right? I'm constantly trying to empower and make it bold and then refine those bold marks. So whether we get time to totally refine things today is is the is, is the full sense of my time I'm left. <laughs> but um this is a more exciting bit to work out. Will we be able to see it on your website? Yeah, well, hopefully, but my battery ran out of my camera, but hopefully I'll be able to, to put up a video of the whole thing, so there'll be a video of it being painted right. in the studio as well. Which there is in the last, the, the last demo's all up there. It was called, uh, I ended up, it was a Gesto Farm, and So that beautiful colour of the Harris water I'm trying to get for that and I'm going to get these bold sort of darker marks and the darker marks because they're so dark uh, over here they'll compete and um, not compete but they'll, they'll kind of balance off the darker bits over here they'll, they'll be darker than that yeah.
richtig haben, ist nur ähm, so Balance der Nacht, Gradium der Nacht. And again, I'll just repeat that again. I notice I've only used one brush the whole thing. <laughs> I want to retain this light here because this is uh, important. I have a little time now, just let me get back there. Ten more minutes. Ten more minutes? Okay, no. Seven more minutes. Seven more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like accuracy. Broken lines, so important to break. Like even figurative painting is probably even more important because you're constantly trying to break the line of an object. And and uh, I think the last illustration here I might have mentioned about the importance of breaking the line. Uh, the video that I've got online that talks about that is called Painting with Freedom, and it's all about the freedom of um, painting shape rather than line. So I, I, I'm not painting any line here, I'm making my lines through shape and uh, all a line is, is the point at which one shape stops and another begins. So Again, I want this idea that the light is lights are at the top and and it's all about this comment about light dissipating down into a landscape. Almost every painting and I every landscape painting I have just starts off light at the top, dark at the bottom. And it's just a comment.